Welcome everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost and today we are going to do something a little bit different. I have been rummaging through my finds, my hunts for my fundals. These are collections of old and interesting papers that can be used for junk journals. But in those finds I have found some very interesting finds that I wanted to show you. I have gathered a few things together and I thought it'd be fun just to go through a few things and uh, show you some of the oddities that I have found. Um, first of all, I would like to mention that in all of June 2022, if you purchase a fundal, you will automatically receive a very special digi kit. It's called Flower Legends and it is not available in my Etsy shop. It is only available through uh, purchasing a fundal in June. So that is going on right now. You don't need any special code no fancy password. If you buy a fundal in June of 2022, this will automatically be placed into your package. And it's five pages. It's a very beautiful, uh, very beautiful imagery. Um, old, old in illustrations and they're just, they're just lovely. And um, so I just wanted to let, just uh, remind everybody that that is going on through June. So that is a peek at that one. It's called uh, Flower Legends. And let's get on with the shoe. Okay. Let me bring this down a little bit because we're going to get in close and personal here. All right, so this is... Okay, sometimes I come across some very interesting and nostalgic and collect, collectible worthy. Um, uh, some of these items are very collectible. Found some interesting things along the way. Um, found a whole bunch of Elvis stuff uh, not that long ago. Just piles of it came through. And signed signatures of... Um, photos of celebrities, things like that. You just never know what you're going to come across in the old hunt. You know, when you're out there slaying dragons, trying to find out what you can find. Um, one of the things I found was some um, vintage Pan Am stuff. Does everybody remember Pan Am? And this apparently is a world pass. And this is uh, apparently Mr. William Sladchik. I would guess that would probably be Sladchik. Um, yeah, so that, I don't know how far he got. I hope he had a great time. I hope he had a whirlwind of a of a journey, but uh, yeah, some of this can um, uh, be very valuable depending on the collector. So you never know what you're going to find when you're out there looking. That's it's the hunt is half the fun, right? Who are we kidding? Um, okay, so let me show you some other fun things that I found along the way. Oh, I thought this was hilarious. Okay, um, okay, so I just this a couple. Where was that other thing I wanted to show you? Did I bring that down? Where is that? I don't see it. I might have to go look for it. Hold on. It's here somewhere. Hold on. Oh, blast. I can't find it. Um, I must have hid it from myself. <clears throat> I probably accidentally pulled, put it away. Can you believe that? But that's okay. I've got a, a bunch of other stuff to show you, but I'll tell you what it was. It was a page from a hymnal, <clears throat> and it said, the song was, Oh, Holy Father, or something, uh, Holy something. And then, But it was page 666 on the hymnal page. I just thought that was a very strange oddity. If I can find it, I will show it to you. I'm sure it will crop up here somewhere. <clears throat> but it was just kind of a, a funny thing. But this I got a hoot out of. Um, now this is where you're trying to make something, I don't know, this is just funny. Um, let me back up a little bit so you can see. Okay, I'll let you look at it and then we'll, we'll discuss. Okay, it's from a very old magazine. <clears throat> now, this lovely lady, okay, like she looks like a, a film star. And it says, the new Phantom Kotex. That's right. An invention that eliminates even the trace of a revealing outline, but saves, uh, but saves for you all the needed protection. Outlines that vanish, but protective thickness and comfort remain. Okay. Um, I really think it's funny how they were. It's almost like winning an Oscar when you're wearing a Kotex, right? Isn't that, that was the feeling I always had. <laughs> Not like I had a mattress between my legs. Um, <laughs> okay, I just thought that was hilarious. Marketing. It's all marketing, people. Are we kidding? That's right. You, <laughs> I don't even want to go there. I, I, this, I just thought that was so comical. They were trying to pass it off as such a smooth thing. Okay, here's another thing that, this was very interesting. I have um, family out in Whittier, California, and I found this. Um, it was um, in some um, ephemera stuff, and it's from Whittier, which I thought was interesting. But interesting, it actually has the person's fingerprint on the back. I mean, oh, isn't that unusual? And uh, this is Catherine Higgins, has her address, um, the fingerprints of, and now she's from the school district, so maybe teachers had to get uh, fingerprints or possibly students, I don't know. 
probably teachers, I would guess. Um, Civil Identification Bureau, very official. Okay, I, I probably stuck that on there. Um, but yeah, I've just never seen that before. So there you go. And I, I want to give this to my cousin who lives out there. So this is coming your way. That's right. Okay. And, um, oh, I thought this was kind of eerie and fascinating and I wanted to show you. Let me zoom in. So this is somebody took the picture off their porch, but then you look in the background. Look what you see. Can you see that ominous? It's either a, I don't know, it almost looks, um, I don't know, maybe like turrets and things like that on an old mansion in the background. I just thought that was such a cool picture. Here you have this very, you know, common uh, regular home, but then this giant place. Oh, you, oh, look at this camera. It gives a really good shot at that. Oh, that's really cool. I couldn't even see it before like that. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, and the weather is cold. Does anybody recognize that, where that is? I'll zoom out again for you slowly. Yeah, taken on the top there, of maybe through a window or something. Yeah, I just thought that was an interesting picture. Some of these picture, old pictures, you just never know what they are, or why they were taken. <clears throat> Here's another interesting thing from old times. Um, apparently, sh paper must have been in short supply or very valuable because I have seen this done on multiple old documents and I don't know why they, d I think I know why they did it, but if anybody knows why they really did it, let us know because I'm curious. Okay, so this, you can already tell, it's very old. Let me zoom in a little for you. This is from, uh, this would be 1876. You can tell by the, the, the fountain pen, heavy scrolling, the weighted um, swoops here, things like that, then you know it's old. And it said, ordered, paid by so-and-so. And here's the secretary's signature. Now here's whatever it was, right? It, lots of, you know, uh, regular stuff. But then they do this cross writing. And this I've seen multiple times. And I'm thinking that that is when the debt was paid. Because it said, received January 1877 from George Taylor. Um, something else I can't quite make out here. So what I think was maybe it was an invoice and then it was paid. So they actually wrote across it showing that it was paid and that was their copy proving that they had paid it. I th I'm thinking that might've been the thing. Um, kind of hard to see exactly what this was. They wrote funny back then, you know, like F's and S's look the same. I don't know. It was all confusing. Like S's look like F's. I don't, I don't understand why that was and how it changed. I'll have to research that. But it was for $18, which was probably a lot of money back then. Just very interesting. Um, so I thought I'd show that to you. And we're just going to move along here. We have a few other things to show you. Um, oh, okay, this was just fun. Um, this is an old vintage card. And uh, let me just back up a little bit for you so you can see. And uh, just this cute little guy. It says, to my husband, my favorite pinup guy. And it says... Um, from his pickup girl. And that's really cute because she's picking up shoes and stuff. Like, obviously this was dated a little while ago, right? <laughs> but uh, what I was really intrigued about it was, it's a pop-up, that's right. So I was looking at it and I was thinking, it doesn't look too complicated. I think if I noodle it a little bit, maybe we can make this one together and we can have a moving pop-up, like where we're getting some action going on there. Okay, so I think that might be fun. So I'm gonna put that in the pop-up pile of possibilities. Actually, I've gotten quite a few ideas of pop-up from old vintage cards when they were really popular. They did a lot of those back then. Uh, okay, here is something I wanted to show those of you who hate the idea of gutting books, and I totally understand. I, com I completely respect your position, but um, this is what you see at the library when books are going to die. Yes, when the guy is going to come and shred them because they're no longer wanted or loved by anyone and uh, they can't give or sell them away, there's a place where books go to die, and it's called The Discarded. Yep, the discarded pile. This is how it starts. This is you get your first stamp that nobody wants you or loves you anymore. And um, you may get taken to the bin. And in my library, they have two bins near the back door, which basically are full of books if anybody wants. And you can just take them. And if you cannot, if they don't get taken, 
They're like little orphans. It's kind of sad. Um, then they go to the, it's like they go to the glue factory. But this is the unglue factory because they're going to be put in the shredding machine. I think they might also have an interim visit limbo, I call it, over to, they have a little area where they try and sell the books. So they probably go there first. If they don't sell, they go to the bin. And if they don't make it from the bin to the uh, shredder, they go. So that does happen. So, um... A lot of books are shredded. It's nobody wants to know how the sausage is made, people, but it is made. Yeah, I know. So if you kind of look at um, taking apart books as freeing the pages, it doesn't sound so bad after a while when you think about what happens to a lot of books. More than we'd like to think about. I actually went into a thrift store and uh, I was asking the lady, do you have any older books? Because I like to uh, look for old books. She goes, you know, she goes, we've got some in this bucket that the guy comes and he, he, he pays me like, like next to nothing, like 25 cents for, um, I don't know, like whatever she's got out there. He just, so she doesn't have to deal with them, um, but he shreds them. That's what he does. So they even make the rounds to the thrift stores and things like that. I know nobody wants to talk about the dark and dirty side of uh, book destru destruction, but it does happen. But on a happier note, <laughs> um, actually, let me show you this night. On a happier note with another little book, I came across this um, little vintage diary. It's a five-year diary. It's just adorable. It's, it's back is broken. It's seen better times, but let me see if I can see the, the dates. Uh, oh, uh, 1976. Okay, so not super old, but this lady, this lady, she did some serious writing. And I think I have, oh, I want to say maybe five, um, five diaries from this lady so you're going to see some of these show up in the fundals and yes i am going to take them apart because in my strange way shape or form this lovely woman's life will now she will be immortalized through being shared with so many different people everybody's going to read a little snippet of her life and of her day and what it was like and her, her writing is very tiny but it's actually very legible which makes it fun and um you can kind of uh, get a feel for what like life was like for her. And I think it started maybe in the 50s and maybe goes to the 70s. I can't remember, but they were five-year cycles. And she would, I mean, she never missed a day. I mean, this lady, she wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And I got to give her a lot of credit because she did a lot more journaling than I've ever done in my entire life. So there you go. And uh, But what I wanted to show you about this was, this is how meticulous she was. She taped the little key to the front. Isn't that adorable? That is so adorable. Um, yeah. I mean, it's even got her name and phone number. I probably shouldn't show that. But um, uh, she, I mean, way to go. And what's her name? Way to go, Jane. You're amazing. I'm very impressed. You get, you get 10 bonus points for that because that's really special. These little five-year diaries were very popular when I was growing up. And I could get like two pages filled. And then I was, I was just done. You know what I mean? I don't know why. I was just like eating potato chips or something instead of filling up my diary, which I should have because this is just mind-stoppingly amazing. And I have bought diaries before and read them from beginning to end, and they really truly are fascinating. Um, if you've never done that, you might want to, I don't know, I mean, you don't have to tear them up, um, but it is something to think about. Like if you want to get a special gift for somebody, something really different, getting them an old diary from somebody else's life, um, and you can find them at auction houses and thrift stores and eBay and stuff like that. Um, uh, very, very interesting. Yes, yes, just saying that. There you go. Okay, so another little interesting thing was this little postcard. And you're going to say, well, Pam, what's so exciting about that little postcard? Well, uh, it's a cute picture, number one. It's very adorable. I love these black and white lithograph style pictures. And they're just adorable. And on the back, you can see just from the writing, you immediately know it's old. This was from 1903. Um, Constantinople. Is that, um, I want to say that's Greece. But now it's flashing. Like, is it, it's not Turkey. Is it Greece? I think it's Greece. So, so, somebody will let me know, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, but you can tell by the writing. And, uh, uh, but what the interesting part was, this little tiny writing at the very bottom. Let's take a look what it says. It says, will you exchange postcards with me? My address is, and then it has somebody's name and address there. So I'm, this person just sent a postcard 
to somebody and said, will you exchange postcards with me? There was somebody way back when in 1903 reaching out for communication and connection. And um, I just thought that was so interesting. What a nice, polite way to do it. Hello, here is a postcard from me. Would you like to exchange postcards periodically? I love that. I just think that is the coolest thing ever. I don't know. Call me, call me old-fashioned. I just, I just really enjoyed that. I wanted to share that with you. So if you don't know what to do today, send somebody a postcard and ask them if they'd like to exchange postcards. There you go. <laughs> Could be a lot of fun. All right, what else do we have? We have this. Okay, here is a poor little torn letter. This poor little letter has been through the biscuit. Well, we can't see a thing. All right. And um, I thought, well, this one I'm just going to use for collage. I could just, you know, it's, it's written on airline paper. You know, that super light um, paper, super thin paper for air, um, air mail. And then I, I, w I was... I started to read it and I thought, oh, maybe I'm not going to use it for a collage. Maybe I'm going to uh, actually glue it back together again. But let me, it's short, but let me just read you a little bit of it and, I'll, and you'll see why I decided to keep it. So just a couple details. Um, let me zoom in here. Um, Ludwigstrasse 34, that sounds like Germany to me. So I'm guessing this is German. It could be Austria as well or Switzerland or something. But um, Ludwig was the name of my... Uh, Wow, my first little Maltese pup. Oh, he's so cute. Um, okay, so anyway, but it's written in English, thankfully. So it could have been war. Maybe somebody was in the war. I don't have a, a year date on it, um, but it says, My dear Linda, what do you think about me? What did you think when you opened the letter addressed to Miss Linda Anderson and read, Dear Aunt Anna, um, uh, Dear Uncle Vic, Yes, uh, you have a... Uh, I am a fool, and I sent the letter intended for you to my aunt. She has uh, yet um, to return it. Something about yet to return it to me, and I will enclose it in that in that letter. Please return also my aunt's letter to me, and uh, and please excuse me. So basically, she <laughs> wrote a couple let. This is a letter about writing letters that were sent to the wrong people. I thought, that is just so funny. They wrote letters about everything, about absolutely everything. Okay, so now here she gets into a little bit more about what's going on. I just thought that was hilarious. I'm so sorry I sent you the wrong letter. Oh, now doesn't, don't you just want to know what those letters said? What did she say? She said, you asked me what I am doing. Still, I am working practically in a pharmaceutical chemist, uh, chemists. I have to work uh, two years, um, I'll end my two years with a trail. That must have meant something, trail, because she refers to that several times through here, some kind of training or something. Before I can go to university, today is a rather difficult study, difficult to study chemistry uh, in Germany because there are two little labor places, 10 places and 300 students, but I still hope to get a piece, a place. But I wish... I wish to do my trail very well, maybe trial, I don't know. Uh, and then there also hope to visit America. Did you read Much Love, Ursula? Yeah, I love that name, Ursula. Isn't that great? I love those old fashioned names, Ursula and Emma and, you know, they're just great. So that was her letter to Auntie saying, oh my God, I sent you the wrong letter. I just thought that was hilarious. So I had to share that with you. And um, okay, so this is the last thing I want to show. This is kind of fun. So I came across this set of books. And I always love a good set of books. You know, I think it's, they're kind of cool. But these were sort of interesting. These are basically the lessons in life. And let me see if that's the best way to show you. Um, I think maybe showing you the titles are just to be fun. This is great. These are the things nobody ever taught us, but somebody should have given us this information. How to be effective um, on the telephone. Yeah, how about that? How to be effective. How to be a good listener, be brief, be interested, hang up at the right time, write it down, take action promptly. I mean, these are really good household tips. These are like Heloise's, you know, tips or something. Uh, here's like little mock conversations. Um, it's not even training for call centers. This is just for normal people talking on the telephone. We all know what that's like when you want to get off the phone. Somebody's still talking. You're like, yeah, okay, I want to go now. Thank you, bye. And um, here's another one. How to work under pressure. Oh, you know, this one's got some gems in it. And these are all from like 1964 to 1965. And these are just a riot. Um, the basic rule, rules. Did you know there were basic rules for working under pressure? Number one, identify the pressure. 
<laughs> this is so funny. Uh, find out if it's real. Break it down into its component parts. Eliminate the unnecessary and unimportant. Organize the parts. <laughs> I like that. Prepare yourself for it. Get ready physically. Get ready psychologically. I mean, it's just, they're just hilarious. And um, um, I, I just think that they, you know, where are these today? These need to be out there today. I, I need these. I, I just think I'm going to read every one of them because, oh, here we have the worry table. Yes, that's very good. Okay, here's a very good worry table. Uh, things that never happen, 40%. Things that can be cha can't be changed by all the worry in the world, 35%. I think that's probably higher, actually. Uh, things that turn out better than expected, 15%. Petty, useless worries, 8%. Nah, I, I think there's more than that. Um, legitimate worries, 2%. There you go. There's the take-home number. 2% of what we worry about. And there's so much energy invested in our worry, isn't there? Um, so I think that's a good thing for those, you know, um, statistical uh, nerds out there who need numbers to understand that worry is a waste of time. Um, there you go. Uh, look for shortcuts. Next, tackle the most difficult. I mean, this is just really good stuff. I mean, this should be Parenting 101 or actually any Human 101. This would be good. Okay, how about this? How to read faster. Okay, let's just look for one little factoid. Pace yourself. Okay, there we go. Be impatient. Push yourself. Have faith in your ability to understand faster than you'll now let yourself. They tried to teach us speed reading in school, and no, I'm sorry. I was just, my eyes were moving. I tried all the tricks, they said. I didn't pick up a word, no. I, I like to kind of get in there and, like, massage the lines with my eyeballs, um, but it just wasn't happening. No, it just wasn't happening, and this, this girl, like, I could think I read okay here I'm going to speed read this now okay they said don't look at the edges you just basically look at clumps and you move like this okay so greater speed perhaps whole new world well-rounded exhilarated newest developments inquiring mind what can be learned no bounds there we go there we now have that page done and then you just you and you have to learn how to flip your pages really fast uh speed reading yes that was an experience mm, didn't do well no flash exercises how fun is that right okay here's another one how to learn this one should come out first. This should be the first edition. Apparently, it's number 12. Um, how to learn. Okay, so let's, let's just look at one little factoid. How to learn. <gasps> Reading is an extremely complex psych psychological process. No kidding. No kidding. I already proved that. I, didn't need, I already knew that. Okay. How to travel efficiently. That's good information we should all know, right? I mean, why is this not being published everywhere today? Okay, money. Oh, here's a good advice. Take plenty. Yeah, I mean, that's just very sound advice. And, and you need like a picture of a guy, you know, he probably has a lot of money in his pocket or this guy's maybe asking him for some money because he didn't have enough with him and he's like to sit down and maybe have something to eat and he doesn't have enough money. See, you should have brought more money. Should have brought plenty. Didn't. Huh? that will cost him. All right. How to handle responsibility. Okay. Uh, and why am I going through these with you? I just think they're a fun thing to find. I just think it's, it's just a cool concept to have all these great life lessons all together. Okay. How to handle responsibility. What are we going to see here? Um, nothing there. <laughs> yeah, nothing. They've got no points. Here, look at that. There's no like little bullet points. What happens? Um, uh, come on. Where's my bullet points? I need my bullet points. Command relies on a chain of responsibility. Okay, well, I have a very small chain of command over here at the paper outpost. There's me, myself, and, and Sonny. Okay, uh, know the conditions and suit action to them. That's right. Know when it's time to wait a while. That's important. I agree. I can't argue there. Um, here's the guy trying, I'm sure he's trying to lead his horse to water, trying to get him to drink, right? I know. How to increase your word power. Okay, let's, let's learn a new word for today. Um, oh, uh, here's a good one. Are you neurotic? Yeah, probably. Okay. Well, we've already got that settled, so I guess I passed. Um, oh, here's, here's like difficult words. Okay. Um, everybody spells ophthalmologist wrong. Everybody forgets the, sa the, the little H there after the P. There is an H after the P, everybody. Optometrist doesn't have it. Optician doesn't have it. Ophthalmologist does. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. All right. How, oh, you know another weird one? Um, the word inflammation has two M's, but the word inflamed only has one. 
I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, strange. Um, how to sharpen your thinking. All right, let's take a, let's take a gander. What are we looking at? Um, does logic equal truth? Oh, now I, this one I'm going to read through. Okay, because yeah, here we're probably talking a Venn diagram. Does anybody remember the Venn diagrams? Um, that's going to be some interesting stuff. What are these cards that are in all of them? They must be like extra exercises or something like that. Well, maybe on a rainy night, we'll get to those. Um, all right, a couple more, a couple more. How to improve your luck. Oh, I bought lottery tickets today. We shall see. Did I follow the plan? You know, I got upsold too. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, I was buying lottery tickets and uh, um, the woman said, oh, do you want to get the easy match? I'm like, what is the easy match? I've never heard of the easy match. Oh, it's only a dollar more. Why is everything only a dollar more? Next thing you're up to like 10 bucks and you have no idea how, because you went in for a dollar lottery ticket and somehow you spent 10 bucks when you come out. And uh, um Okay, I did, I did win two bucks on the easy match, but I'm still eight in the hole, so there you go. Um, how to improve your luck. Oh, that's very good. I need, yeah, definitely advice there. Believe in your chances. Yeah, okay. <laughs> how about hard work? Um, how to get your money's worth. Oh, hey, hey, crafters have this cornered, right? We're going to get our money's worth. Make sure you need it. Well, okay, I already failed that. Um, the four, okay, we got to read this. The four simple rules for getting your money's worth. Is it impractical? Soft in the head? A spendthrift? Oh, that must have been um, um, what they called people. He's soft in the head. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you need it. Determine what you can afford. Analyze the value and decide in that order. Um, you know, there's a lot of leeway when it comes to crafting stuff. Make sure that you need it. Well, you know, sometimes we don't really need it. We just want it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, how to increase your self-confidence. Always a good one. Always a good one. Any interesting factoid? Is your posture poor? Stand up straight, shoulders back, chest out, butt in. You're already looking better. Okay. How to improve your English. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh. Oh, the, this, oh, this, this is going to have you, is this right? Is that right? A or B? A or B? Uh, which is the right word tense to use? That's too complicated. I'm not going there. Okay. How to handle an audience. Oh, man, I could read this one. We'll put this one aside. I'm not even going to tell you the secrets in this one. I'm just going to peek. To show yourself how actions control emotions, go to the mirror again. Oh, my gosh. What if I only show my hands? Hello. <laughs> Oh, no. Okay, we'll put you over there. We have to read you. How to concentrate. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? How to concentrate. These are the coolest little books. Anyway, um, so see, can you read what that says? Anybody? Anybody? Famous book? Famous story? Okay, we'll see who catches it. See who's sharp in the group. All right. A guide to high-speed mathematics. You see, you never know. When you're out there and you're looking for fun things to put in your junk journals, sometimes you fall over a pile of really unusual books. Where did I get this? Where did I get this? I don't remember. Is that, that's sad, isn't it? Yeah. No, I, 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 sure, I slayed it and dragged it home. Okay, I'm already highly intimidated. No, we're backing away slowly. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And what do we got here? Okay. How to keep well-informed. Hmm. Oh, well, do we read the news? Oh, no, we, we don't like the news. The news is painful. Yes, it's always a very dark and stormy night when you read the news. That's right. Test your paper versus the nation's best. Hmm. So I guess you compare newspapers. Oh, I don't have time for that. I'm, I'm making too much stuff. No, we're not doing that. Okay, how to improve your conversation. Number one, don't have plastic teeth. You'll be able to te speak much more easily. Try this icebreaker test. Ah, to break the ice, I might say to him, hey, Heavily built man is standing on a street corner holding a map in his hand and obviously puzzled. He looks at, why is it, why does it make a difference whether he's a heavily built man? He looks at the map and then at the street signs. To break the ice, I might say to him, oh, I guess I have to fill it in. <laughs> I might say to him, <laughs> oh, what should I say to that poor soul looking around? He's, I'd be like, where's your cell phone, man? Just Google it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, look, we got the end, a little extra. Isn't that the best thing when you, you're looking through old ephemera and you find fun stuff? Like, here's some old tickets. Here's some old tobacco tickets. And what's this? It's a little old receipt for, from 1966 from Gladys. Gladys Street for 75 bucks. She paid Robert Inman. I wonder what she paid him for. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's very interesting. So you never know. You always get like little bonuses in here. How fun is that? And, and a couple more. How to remember the and names and faces. Oh, I should give that to my husband. He always says he can never remember people's names. Um, we always do the, uh, you know how, like if somebody names, somebody's name is John, you picture their head like a toilet. And then every time you see him, you, you, you think toilet. Well, you don't think you picture John, John, like <laughs> that's his name, John. So you do goofy things like that. I, we do that. It's true. We do. Um, and we actually sometimes, we practice when we walk around the neighborhood and we see some people all the time, but we don't know their names, so we give them names. And so, um, yeah, a lot of people in our neighborhood, they have names that are not really theirs now because of us. How to discover your hidden abilities. Okay, this is it, the answer to everything. Look at your school records. I think not. <laughs> Get out your high school record. I would not recommend that. If you can't find it, Yes, that would be my case. Go to the school and get a copy um, or write for it. See, they wrote back then. Oh, well, there you go. I don't know. But that, that just solves all the life's problems. I mean, I think if we sent this to all the leaders of the world, everybody sat down and just read these books, we'd been in a much better place. There you go, folks. <laughs> so I hope you had fun today. And these are just fun and goofy little things that I found along the way that I wanted to share with you and never know what we're going to find next. I will keep showing you. Oh, um, a couple other things. I did want to tell you that um, if you remember, I have a very special ledger. It's an old antique ledger that is a cemetery slash, I want to call it taxi. So uh, what they did was they logged everything that they did. They were the caretakers, the undertakers. They dressed the body, cleaned the body, shaved the body, pallbearer gloves stuff like that it lists exactly what they did who the person was how old they were when they died things like that it's very interesting it's from the 1800s it was one what i called one of my pretties uh, meaning very heavily guarded didn't want to break into too often because i just treasured it so much but i have come to the point now where i'm ready to free the pages to the world so those of you who are currently ordering right now they just i think started today Maybe the last round. So there's about yeah, a good round. Like I would say the last, if you ordered in the last day or two, you might get a page from that particular cemetery. But it's just very interesting because the historical information there is fascinating. And along with the other things, they're all interesting. And there's also an interesting blue paged one that's really cool coming through. And also I came across some original Yale newspapers and they're so cool. There's a lot of college information in them. So I'm trying to include some pages from those in there as well. So these are obviously all included as long as supplies last because the funnel, you know, supplies, um, as I, I like to collect things. And um, as I go through them, they just, they're gone because they're basically one of a kind type things. So um, they do change in character, but I'm always on the lookout for fun and interesting things that I think you guys might find intriguing. And I like, oh, I'm, I get so excited looking because it's, it's just so much fun, honestly. I really like doing it. And this really wasn't anything. I was just doodling on some library cards. And I don't know, I just guess one day I thought I'd show you that you can doodle on library cards. Not fascinating, but just thought I'd share that. So anywhere, just don't be sure not to go anywhere without your new Phantom Kotex, and life will be good. So there you go, folks. If you haven't signed up for my free monthly email newsletter, make sure you do. And um, uh, why? Because you get a free um, uh, digital image emailed to you every month. You get a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. It comes in Word doc and PDF format, and you can change it to the words or the font any way you like, or you can use it as is with my blessings. I tuck them in the beginning of my junk journal to help explain to the recipient what a junk journal is and how to use it. You also get a list of supplies um, and uh, page list ideas, along with uh, uh, junk journal tips, um, updates from me, and um, peeks at new digi kits coming out. So if you haven't signed up, make sure you do. And I also, uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I have an Etsy shop where when I have journals done, I put them in there along with bundles. I sell my digi kits in there. They're computer files that uh, you pr uh, purchase and then you can print them out at home. And um, using your junk journals, all sorts of different ways. Um, my fundals, which I explained, I believe. And um, 
Did I explain? I don't know. But basically, they're collections of old papers, very interesting things, interesting, unique old book pages and fun things that you can put in your junk journals. And um, I have a print and mail um, uh, service. So if you don't have a printer, but you like the digikits, I will print them out for you. You just pay one price and the one price gets you 10 digikits, which is 50 printed pages on a nice lightweight cardstock. And um, that does include uh, free priority shipping as well. So all I need from you is the list of the names of the 10 digikits and you can either email that list to me to pam at thepaperoutpost.com or you can um, send it to me through Etsy message. And I also have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies of things that I use here um, at the Paper Outpost. You're gonna find links for it there. I also have a merchandise shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon, you're gonna see some cool t-shirts and sweatshirts and mugs and stuff. And if you might like to get a gift for yourself or for a family or a friend, uh, there you go, I've got you covered. And um, if you like, subscribe and share, that would be awesome. Uh, that helps my channel out. And remember most of all, there's a little fluffy faced guy. That, I don't want, okay, I, I'm coming, I'm coming. All right, I'm here and everything is okay. And I would like to say that, hello everybody. Oh my gosh, that's so bright, mom. Why you got the bright light? It's not in your eye, honey. I, I tilted it so it's not. I was really sleepy. So I'm not gonna say much. I'm just going right back to, I'm actually snoring. I don't know if you can hear that. But yep, I'm gone. Oh um, yeah, I'm selling the big logs now. Yep, it's all that squirrel chasing today earlier on my walk. Does it to me every time. How come I sound like a little old lady right now, Mama? I don't know. But um, I think I'm going to go back to sleep. Happy crafting, everybody. Yes, yes, I'm alive. I am alive. I swear it. Here, show my foot. Whoop, I got an eye. I got tip. There I am. Hey, everybody. Take care. Love you. Bye. <laughs> okay. Well, you're a little chatter pants for somebody who's half asleep. My goodness. Take care, everyone. Remember, the fun can be simple. And create with reckless abandon. Bye-bye.